I'm a geologist. And I'm a geophysicist. And we're here to tell you what we do. Our primary role is to find new sources of oil and gas, and that's a technological challenge. Oil and gas deposits are found thousands of feet underground in certain types of sedimentary rock and only in certain areas. It costs a lot of money to drill wells, so we can't just go around drilling holes hoping that we'll make a discovery. For that reason, the industry has developed sophisticated tools and techniques that we can use to improve our decision making and to reduce our mistakes. Those tools and techniques also cost money, so we have to focus our search wisely. There's a saying in the industry that the best place to look for oil and gas is where it's already been found, and we spend the majority of our efforts looking in known hydrocarbon provinces. We particularly focus in areas where our company already has producing operations, because our existing information, organization, and infrastructure provides an advantage. However, we also look in unexplored or lightly explored so-called frontier areas. Exploration wells drilled in frontier areas are called wildcats and are higher risk, but are done with the hope of making large new discoveries. The tools and techniques we use vary by area, but no matter what area we're in, one of the first things we want to do is learn as much as we can about any other wells that have already been drilled nearby. We try to get access to data from those wells called logs, and if we're lucky, there might have been some downhole rock samples taken called well cores. Logs and well cores can provide critical information about the rock strata in the area, and data from multiple wells can be correlated to help predict what lies between and around those wells. However, we can't always get access to data from wells drilled by others, and there may be little or no well information available in frontier areas. Our next steps in a frontier area would involve tools and techniques that provide information over a wide area at a low cost. This might include a field study of exposed rock and other surface features that could provide clues of the regional geology. We might buy and examine specialized satellite photos for a broader surface view. We might also commission area surveys using aircraft or vessels that take gravity and magnetic readings. Those readings can identify the outlines of sedimentary rock accumulations called basins, as well as some of the internal features within those basins. We wouldn't choose a well location based on such low resolution data, but we would map and analyze the area and possibly identify a portion that's worthy of further analysis using our most valuable tool, seismic data. Seismic data is acquired by creating artificial sound waves at the surface that travel downward through the underground rock layers. When the acoustic waves pass between rock layers, the change in rock characteristics causes some of the waves to reflect back towards the surface while others continue on. Sensors called geophones are placed at the surface to detect the reflections and the data is relayed to a truck with recording equipment. The results are then processed by computer to generate underground images that show the boundaries and structure of the rock layers. Seismic can also be acquired offshore in a somewhat similar manner. And seismic can be collected in either a single 2D line or a 3D grid. 3D seismic provides much better coverage, but is also much more expensive. We help select areas for seismic coverage, but we hire geophysical contractors to do the work. Seismic acquisition and processing can cost anywhere from hundreds of thousands of dollars to many millions of dollars, depending on the type and size of the survey, as well as the location and terrain. Sometimes we can save money by buying access to seismic that has already been acquired by others. It may have been processed using old technology, but we can reprocess the data to improve the results. We use the seismic data to identify underground structures or features that appear large enough to hold economic quantities of oil and gas. We call those prospects. We create computer models of prospects from seismic and other available data so that we can better understand their size, structure, and characteristics. We also do studies to determine the likelihood that oil and gas migrated into the prospect area, which is critical. 
If we are doing seismic for a shale drilling project, we are not looking for individual prospects, but we instead use seismic data and modeling to understand the aerial extent, thickness, dip angle, continuity, natural fracturing, and other characteristics of the shale. Even good shale is relatively low quality compared to conventional prospects, and it will be developed using horizontal wells and multi-stage hydraulic fracturing. If a conventional prospect looks promising, we work with other disciplines to determine whether a successful discovery would be economic to develop. For example, we work with drilling engineers to estimate well costs and to coordinate drilling of approved prospects. Petrophysicists to estimate the amount of oil and gas in place and the reservoir flow characteristics. Reservoir engineers to estimate how many wells would be required and the resulting flow rates that would be achieved by those wells. Petroleum engineers and facility engineers to determine what would be required to complete the wells, process production, and transport it to market. Business analysts to prepare economic evaluations, analyze options, and perform risk analysis. If we don't already have mineral rights, we need to work with land professionals or lawyers to see if we can get those rights under reasonable terms. And finally, we often communicate with upper management because we have to convince them that they should take the risk of drilling the wells that we recommend. Regarding our own roles, some people wonder what the difference is between a geologist and geophysicist. In the past, our roles were somewhat divided. Geologists were focused more on geological studies, mapping, and well monitoring, and geophysicists were focused more on computer-based modeling and geophysical analysis. These days, geophysical analysis has become so important to exploration that geologists also need to work with that information. And software has become so advanced that geophysicists don't have to wrestle full time with the data to generate useful results. Because of this, geologists and geophysicists have both expanded their roles and now do many of the same things. That's not such a stretch because there is a high degree of overlap in the curriculum required to earn a degree in geology or geophysics. We both study geology, geophysics, math, chemistry, and physics. But geophysicists get deeper into math and physics, while geologists study more about rock formation and characteristics. Our efforts are supported by geotechnicians and other support staff that help us gather data, build models, prepare maps, and more. We couldn't be successful without them. We love our jobs because we have a lot of variety and get to work with a constant stream of new technology. We also get to make important judgment calls that can have a big impact on our company. The most exciting time of all is when we make a new discovery. However, it's the nature of the business that some wells will be unsuccessful. The dreaded dry holes. We learn something new every time we drill a well. So sometimes those dry holes lead to the next discovery. Well, it's been great sharing what we do, and we hope that you learn something useful. If you work in the oil and gas industry, you should take a course from Energy Training Resources. Their one-day course will show you how your role fits into the industry, and will provide information that will help you interact better with other functions. Longer courses are also available that cover broader areas and go into more detail. So long. <laughs>